Hi guys, I come back. My name is Yvonne Princess Shabangu and you are welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, you're welcome to like, subscribe, share and comment and I'm back again with another book review. And we are reviewing on Ted Kelly, Uniquely You by Joyce Mayer, a best-selling author. Like guys, I really enjoyed this book. I think this book was an affirmation that um, it's okay to be yourself. You don't have to look like somebody else. You don't have to feel like somebody else. And you don't have to compare yourself with anybody. And also gave me an affirmation that I'm covered by the grace of God. And God knows that I am only but human. And God knows that I will make mistakes. And he gives me grace. Literally. Like it gave me some sort of validation and made me more in touch with myself. Right? Um... Question number one. So you all, you know the question that we always ask ourselves, right? The B question. It's always, what am I hoping to achieve with this book? So with this book, literally, I, when I saw the title, I was like, you know what? I want to meet a better version of me. I want to meet a me that I'm always hiding because I feel like I need to be like other people. And this book definitely gave me that. It gave me that whole, that that voice that says, you know what? You're not like A, you're not like B, and you don't have to be like those people. You are okay the way you are. You just need to elevate and grow according to God's call and purpose for your life, literally. Like, and also it taught me that um, just me being a child of God does not exempt me from doing necessary work to be a better individual, you know. Um, then there's a lot of element on learning to forgive yourself learning to forgive other people learning to have boundaries with yourself and others as well healthy boundaries for that matter so yeah guys this this was a great read i really enjoyed it i got this from exclusive books um it was 296 it was a beautiful read yeah i also got it as a gift if i'm not mistaken let me see um yeah, I actually got it as a book. I, I bought somebody as a gift and then it sold out. I couldn't get my own copy. Then somebody else bought it for me as a gift. But yeah, you can get it from exclusive books. Like I said, I, I, I don't understand people that buy books elsewhere. I don't get it. Anyway, without me being dramatic, let's go into what I learned from this book. Like one of the things that I loved about this book, guys, it's... Um, the questions that you need to ask yourself at the end of some actually i love how also practical it is there's certain questions you need to ask yourself before you need you move to the next chapter right so let's go into it right the found so it says the foundation of any relationship this is what this is what i learned from joyce mayer right i learned that the foundation of any of our healthy relationship is receiving god's love for us and then loving ourselves you cannot give what you do not have like it's that simple guys when you accept and understand that God loves you, then it makes it easier for you to relate with humanity. And it makes it easier for you to trust that actually other human beings love. They're capable of loving you. You're capable of loving them. But if your relationship with God is distorted, you're likely not to relate uh, with other people well, right? I was watching, listening to something. Somebody said their relationship with God mirrors the relationship they have with their physical father so many times we don't realize how our relationship with god actually mirrors um how we relate to other people so if you don't have a good relationship with god you're likely not to understand what he created i hope i make sense right and then what am i hoping to achieve right number one i'm hoping to accept myself fully like i said earlier on i needed to tap into a me that i've hidden for so long right and then also receiving God's love for me and extending it to myself and to others. So it's one thing receive, it, but it's one thing comprehending what you've received and being able to spread it and extend it to others. So my hope is also was also to receive the love of God. I've already received it, but to have an understanding what it means to be loved by God and be able to love his people as well. Right? And then... Um, Receiving God's love, it also teaches us that receiving God's love allows us to experience unlimited possibilities. And it allows us to experience unlimited love 
that we give to others and that we receive right we are not supposed to be the same that's one of the biggest lessons of the book we're not supposed to be the same we ought to stop trying to make people become like us or us trying to be like them right you you're not supposed to be like me i'm not supposed to force you to be like me or you force me to be like you right because we created uniquely you know god made us in his image but we're all different and we have to embrace that difference and be authentic in it and then um also it is uh, it is imperative that you understand that you have a freedom of choice don't be backed in a corner where you feel like you have no other option. You have a choice to do what you need to do to be more comfortable with self, to love yourself. You have a choice to love yourself. You have a choice to nature your relationship with God. You have a choice to pursue your God, literally, right? And I'm sure you guys are thinking, why is she just reading spiritual books? Because it's that time of the year. I need to set the tone for the year, right? So, yeah, guys, um... Sorry. Um, so, and then again, she teaches, she asks us questions. The first question she asks, do you believe that God loves you? And I said, yes, without a doubt. Do you love and accept yourself? And then I said, yes, I love myself, but I'm still working on acceptance. There's parts of me that I haven't fully accepted. And I think my starting point is acknowledging that there's certain things that I feel like I could possibly change, but also there's certain things that I'm not going to be able to change because that's how God created me to be. And then are you a people pleaser oh boy oh boy i have 85 percent people pleasing syndrome hey I've, I've become better over the years because i'm learning boundaries i'm learning to create them respect them and all of that right but yeah i have some 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 work to do with people pleasing are you at peace with yourself definitely guys if there's anything i'm content about it is who i am who i am where i'm at like i'm content can't ask for more do you fear rejection that's another thing i don't fear being rejected like i'm those people i don't even know how i feel towards rejection right um i'm those people that are like if people really like you they'll be there if they don't or if they're not there then it means they don't care for you like you know i feel like when you have experienced a deep type of rejection i feel like when not to undermine but when small types of rejection come through you're just like it's whatever because you have no expectation whatsoever right and then um do you compare yourself to others yes sometimes i'm guilty of that sometimes not all the time but i'm, I'm a work in progress guys and then it says um also it teaches us that god always answers even though he may not even though we may not like the answer it gives us, God will always answer us. When we ask for things, when we consult, whatever we do, God always answers us. It's just that sometimes we think he didn't answer because we don't like the answer he gives us, right? And then also you need to be still in order for you to hear God, in order for you to hear the voice of God. You can't hear the voice of God if you're constantly busy because it gets lost in between. You know, there's uh, some 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 break uh, breakdown of communication if you're constantly busy. So it's imperative to have downtime. It's imperative to have time of stillness so that you can hear God speak to you and He can direct you about your life, right? And then um, another thing: stop imposing things on people. It may not work. Don't do it. If you've got suggestions or recommendations, do that. But don't impose, don't tell people what to do, you know, let them do what they need to do the way they know how to. You can only recommend or suggest, right? And then, um, yeah, it's also imperative that you don't impose yourself on others. Help them find their own path. Don't impose your rules or your way of doing things and say that's the only way. It's not going to help, right? And then also another thing, this one was quite, yeah, it was, it was hectic. She says um, it's imperative to understand that God is not going to help you become what you're not. God is not going to help you. It's basically saying God doesn't bless who you pretend to be, right? God doesn't bless who you pretend to be. God blesses who you really are. So stop, stop playing games. Stop playing mind games. Tap into your real self and watch God humor you. So the whole pretense of trying to be so and so, like it doesn't work at all, guys. It's imperative that you're yourself right and then um whew. and then she also teaches us that freedom true freedom comes from stopping to try 
free uh, sorry guys true freedom is when you stop trying to impress others and get comfortable with being yourself so that is where freedom comes that is where liberation starts when you become comfortable with who you are when you become comfortable with what god created in you you know you you, you just stop yeah that's when you're fully liberated because you also tap into your real self without trying to filter yourself right and then um again pursue a relationship with god guys pursue like romanticize your relationship with god go after your relationship with god and peace found there intensely do not sleep on what your relationship with god can be i understand that maybe you already have a beautiful relationship with god but it can be more it's imperative that you intensively intensely nature it chase after it pursue it the same way we pursue our dreams our careers and all of that pursue god and you will see even scripture says seek ye the kingdom of god and all things will follow right and then um above all believe have faith believe in god believe that he's there with you believe that he answers believes believe that he goes ahead of you he goes before you he's always beside you believe when you believe you've conquered half the mountain literally when you believe that you're gonna get to wherever you're going you've literally done half the job right so many of us ask and forget to receive all that god has given us the most important part of asking is receiving too so it's imperative that when you ask you position yourself to receive many times you say god can i get a job but are you in position are you prepared to wake up at five in the morning are you prepared to like dress accordingly are you prepared to learn how to read so that you can articulate yourself well when you communicate with other people right it's imperative that you have an understanding that you need to position yourself to receive i will give you a typical example when you ask maybe you ask for somebody to pass you a pencil what do you do you stretch out your hand to go for it that is you preparing yourself to receive but many times we say to god god can i have and then we remove our hand then the blessing drops on the concrete or on the ground and then we miss it but when you ask keep your hand there and say god i'm ready to receive then when god puts in whatever blessing you grab it with both hands because you are in receiving mode right and then it also says god has given us willpower to make good or right spiritual decision right so it's imperative that you understand that you have willpower no one can make you do things that you don't want to do. It's 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 impossible. It's highly unlikely because you always have a choice. You've been given authority over everything. You've been given in, in Genesis, God says when he created us, he's, he gave us dominion over everything. So God has given you dominion. It even says that God created us and, and when he created Adam and Eve, he said, be fruitful and multiply. So you have the ability to dominate. You have the ability to be fruitful and you have the ability to multiply right and then um that and then another thing this is a revelation that i got right it's imperative to understand that um we are born into sin so it means that because we're born into sin it means that we wake up every day we fight to do a good thing it is easy to do a bad thing but it is also easy to do a good thing and when you find yourself doing more bad things, it's important that you go back to stretching the muscle of doing good. Because like I said, every human being is capable of doing anything bad. But each time you do a good thing, you are exercising. You see, every time you exercise or you start eating healthy, you will see with the results. That's the same thing. The more you do good, it shows in your character. It shows in how you carry yourself. It shows in how you treat yourself, how you treat others. So it's always imperative that you have, you know that you have the willpower to do good or bad. Whatever more you do, you become. The more you do bad, you become bad. The more you do good, you become good. Right? Excuse me excuse me right um it's often going to feel uncomfortable it'll be like lifting weights you know when you lift weights it's uncomfortable but eventually your body becomes hot it becomes like fire it becomes healthy it becomes heat right so let your muscle of goodness be stretched lift it move it around do good as much as you can right and the more you exercise this muscle 
the better you become at it and the more you attract beautiful things right and then the best way to know that's another thing right ask i ask myself how how does one know that god is in it god is with them right it says the best way to know if god is in it is the presence or the absence of peace is there peace is the absence of peace then you know if there is peace god is in it if there isn't peace then you need to go back to the drawing board and ask god what is it about this that is not make sure right and then also often we think the problem is that people don't like us but the problem is actually that we don't like ourselves you are the biggest approval you need. That's the thing. We always put responsibility on other people to like us or to do certain things. But you realize that right now, let's say I can make a remark about my hair and feel like, oh my God, I don't like how it looks. Trust me, I can go out there and people say things or people don't even notice. But I'm going to start projecting because I have told myself that I don't like the hair. Then I'm expecting everybody else not to like it, right? So many times we project. You are the approval you need. It's not the people, it's you. How do you see yourself? How do you view yourself? The most important thing that you can ever work on is your self-esteem, your self-confidence. Once you master that, I mean, it, it, it's progressive. You, you grow confidently every day. You work on it every day. It's like a muscle as well. You stretch it, you stretch it. But it's imperative that you put in the work. You see yourself in a light and a beautiful manner because if you don't see yourself in a positive manner, don't expect the rest of the world to see you in a good tone. Chances are, like, that's not enough. That's why you find people that say, I've got fans, I've got numbers and all of these things, but I'm unhappy because I don't like myself. So start with liking yourself, then everybody else comes after, right? And once you like yourself, it won't matter who likes you or who doesn't. All right, and then, um, whew, guys, this was a great book, eh? Thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay, so that's all for my notes. Okay, so yes, guys, um, it's imperative that you understand that, uh, you, you're not in this alone, you're with God. It's imperative that you understand that you are the only person, like, this is the only body God will ever give you. There is no other body, so you need to love that body. You need to cherish that body. You need to do your level best to make sure that um, that body is, is nourished, that body is loved. Look after yourself. Look after your emotions. Look after... Yeah, man, love yourself. I think my word today is love yourself. Love yourself. I can't stress this enough. Love yourself. Love yourself. Do not sleep on yourself. Love yourself. Show up as much as you can do everything you can to be the best version of yourself understand that you can you can make mistakes you are going to make mistakes and um yeah man um god loves you you're loved you're enough you are the way you are not because god w was bored or anything like that right you are the way you are because god really thought of you god really took his time with you you know, so I want to tell you that it's okay to be you. You don't have to be somebody else. Okay, guys, you don't have to be somebody else. It's okay to be who you are. It's okay to showcase yourself. When you try to be somebody else, you, de you do disservice to yourself. You never reach your fullest potential. You stay meek. You stay average because you're trying to be somebody else. And maybe, food for thought, maybe many of us, it's not that we're inadequate. Maybe it is that we are trying to step on the shoes of other people and the shoes are really heavy. Or we're trying to drive on other people's lanes and it's really heavy. Maybe if we try to be in our own lanes or on our own lanes, maybe we'll do so great. Maybe we'll also excel in whatever, right? So think about it. I hope you enjoyed this book review. I hope you'll get yourself a copy. If you want to be in touch with yourself and understand how God designed you and created you, goodness this is the perfect book for you god bless you and one more time this is the cover check it out and let me know how it goes god bless you bye